When you glance at this photo, it might appear to be an ordinary family picture. However, there is nothing ordinary about this family. Within this snapshot, there are three Nobel Prize winners earning them the title of the Nobel family. Each of the three members has achieved something truly remarkable. But that's not all. There's more to uncover about this extraordinary family when you observe them all together. At the heart of this family's extraordinary achievements is Marie Sklodowska Curie. It all began in her hometown of Warsaw, Poland. Both her parents were educators and her father's strong convictions about an independent Poland often led to challenges in maintaining his job. She pursued her education covertly due to being barred entry from the male-only University of Warsaw. As a result, she sought education at the Flying University, which was a clandestine institution that provided education to Polish women who were excluded from traditional universities. She then had to depart her homeland and seek education in France. It was at the Sorbonne University in Paris that she achieved one of her earliest and most significant milestones, obtaining her PhD. Notably, she became the first woman to be awarded a PhD from the Sorbonne University, a renowned institution in France. It was during her time in France that she crossed paths with Pierre Curie in 1894, thanks to an introduction by Polish physicist Józef Wieros Kowalski. Marie's quest for a laboratory to conduct magnetism experiments led her to Pierre, who was suggested as a possible source of available space. Pierre graciously welcomed her into his laboratory as a student, and their professional collaboration gradually evolved into a romantic relationship. Their union culminated in marriage in 1895, and their family expanded to include two daughters, Irene and Eve, that we will talk about later. After that, Marie and Pierre started working on radioactivity, and their main discoveries were the ability to isolate the radioactive elements which came from the uranium-based, or called pitch blend. They discovered two new radioactive elements, radium and polonium, with the latter paying homage to Marie's birthplace, Poland. In 1903, their relentless efforts bore fruit as Marie and Pierre were jointly honored with the Nobel Prize in Physics. Alongside Professor Becquerel, this achievement marked a historic moment as Marie became the first woman to be awarded a Nobel Prize. Nonetheless, Marie's journey was not without obstacles as certain members of the scientific community initially hesitated to fully acknowledge her contributions. It was only after Pierre's intervention that she was recognized as an equal recipient of the award. Tragically, Pierre's life was cut short when he died from a horse carriage accident in 1906. Despite this loss, Marie continued their work and was offered her husband's teaching position, becoming the first female professor at the Sorbonne. Curie's research was pivotal in comprehending the impact of radioactivity and quantifying its effects on living cells. She played a pivotal role in establishing the field of radiation therapy for cancer. Marie Curie once again etched her name in history when she received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1911 solidifying her unique position as the sole woman to have earned two Nobel Prizes in two distinct fields. And it is precisely at this juncture that I need to introduce Irene Curie. The young Irene inherited her parents' unyielding passion for science and chose to follow in their illustrious footsteps, becoming deeply intrigued by the field of radioactivity. During World War I, our heroine assists her mother in setting up radiological devices in field hospitals on the front lines to treat the wounded soldiers in the trenches. It's during these crucial times that young Irene Curie, who was just 17 years old at the time, actively participated in these efforts. It's a testament to her dedication and courage. Marie Curie herself invented the first radiological car during World War I. It was a groundbreaking vehicle containing an X-ray machine and photographic darkroom equipment which could be driven right up to the battlefield where army surgeons could use x-rays to guide their surgeries. These mobile x-ray units were called Little Curies. There's also this captivating photo of the two Curies, Marie and Irene. In the image, we see Marie's commitment as she dedicated an additional year after the war's conclusion to educate others, including the group of American soldiers depicted here about radiology. Fast forward to 1920, Irene obtains her bachelor's degree and initiates her research at the Curie Laboratory. Four years later, a young physicist named Frederick Joliet becomes a part of the Curie Laboratory. Following a year of collaborative work, 
the two young scientists unite in marriage. The young couple makes a groundbreaking discovery that revolutionizes the fields of physics and chemistry. In 1934, Irene and Frederick uncover artificial radioactivity, the ability to make an element radioactive. Thanks to this discovery, they are awarded the Nobel Prize in 1935. Irene's fame is further enhanced by her being one of the first women to join the French government as an undersecretary. However, science remains her primary passion. In 1946, she becomes the director of the Curie Laboratory at the Radium Institute. The same year, Irene takes on the role of Professor of General Physics at the Faculty of Sciences in Paris, a position previously held by both her parents. Taking a divergent path from her parents' scientific pursuits, Eve Curie, the younger daughter of Marie and Pierre, pursued a unique journey that led her to excel as a writer, her most notable work. Madame Curie, a biography of her mother, became a bestseller and earned her literary acclaim. Eve's life took a turn toward humanitarian efforts during World War II, when she became a foreign correspondent and traveled extensively to war zones. Later, she married Henry Richardson Labuis, an American diplomat who eventually became the executive director of UNICEF. In 1965, when UNICEF was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, Eve's husband accepted the honor on the organization's behalf, making him the fifth member of the Curie family to receive a Nobel Prize. The Curie family's achievements go beyond the scientific realm, making them a unique and remarkable family in history. Their contributions to science and humanity have left an indelible mark, inspiring generations of scientists and researchers. The Curies have forever earned their place as icons of science and peace.